Welcome back to the Tom Anderson Show, the best company on your morning drive in Alaska on KVNT 1020 AM and 92.5 FM. Online at TomAndersonShow.com, 6 AM to 9 AM Alaska time. Want to join us? Call 907-357-5868. That's 357-5868. Good morning, America. Here's Tom Anderson. Well, not quite, Tom. This is Brad Keithley sitting in for Tom today. Tom's taking a, a week of, uh, of well-deserved vacation. Uh, he'll be back uh, next Wednesday. In the meantime, you're going to have uh, some guest hosts sitting in. I'm sitting in today. And with us in this segment, sitting in with me, is Craig Medred. Uh, I, Craig, Craig probably is one of the people in this state that needs absolutely no introduction. He's been around um, uh, well, you were here when the, when Denali formed, right? You were here when the mountains were formed? <laughs> yeah, I think I was here before that. I was, uh, when the dinosaurs were roaming the North Slope. <laughs> so you know where all the oil is, you know, where all the dinosaurs died and, you know, yeah, I know where they, I know where they all went down and, uh, you know, I can remember the dinosaur hunts up there. <laughs> well, Craig, thank you for taking your time, ta- taking the time to join us today. Craig, uh, currently is writing a, uh, a blog that I follow closely and daily. It's uh, craigmedred.news. Uh, the, sub, the subtitle is A Home for Readers and Thinkers. Um, I'm certainly a reader. Sometimes I try to be a thinker. Um, Craig, the, 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 the thing I want to talk about in this first segment uh, is, is fish. Uh, Craig's been writing a lot, of the, a lot of the blog articles, sort of panning through them here, have been, uh, have been fish-related and Craig, here's 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 my question. I some of the some of the fish news seems to be good. We have a lot of, and then and then some of it seems to be bad and very bad. I was listening to a to a segment from uh, Alaska Public uh, News Radio on the way on the drive up this morning, uh, talking about the warm water blob and the effect it's having on the on uh, on the fish population. So help help straighten it out for for me and for the listeners. Is fish good? Bad? What's going on? Well, some of it's very bad. Um, I think we can figure that probably fifty thousand, fifty million dollars was lost to the state on the Copper River sockeye run, which came back really bad. Um, Tuna Cook Inlet sockeye runs are coming back very really bad. Um, there've been some bright spots with small runs, but aside from Bristol Bay which has come back well. The uh, the major producing big money runs, which are sockeye, look pretty grim. And and are we are we through the season, or is there still hope, or are we just are is this just going to uh, be a we're bad pre- year? We're, we're we're pretty much done on sockeye, and uh, it, it's all looking bad. Uh, pink salmon are, are now starting to come in. There are. Uh, Low, low value, high volume fish. Expectation is we'll catch a lot of those. Indications are we're going to catch a lot of those. Um, you know, so it'll shake out as a probably a half piece a year, but not a very good year. So, it have have we have we identified the causes of the bad runs? Is it the warm water blob, or is or or, or what's what's going on? What's what's the? Are we seeing this well, as just a, a a year deal, or are we seeing this as a longer term deal? It's the ocean. We know that just because of the consistency of so many runs sailing, the blob isn't a convenient thing to blame because it's different. Um, the data is not very consistent. The, the blob made some fish bigger in places. It appears to have helped some fish. It appears to have hurt some fish. I mean, it's really... It, <laughs> the ocean is a, is a hard, hard ecosystem to, to sort out. Um, yeah, we've spent decades now building up whale populations up there, building up sea lion populations, building up seal populations. We have a lot of top-down drivers. Uh, meanwhile, we pumped a lot of hatchery pink salmon into the bottoms, so we have a bunch of bottom-up drivers. Um, and there are a lot of scientists debating whether the system is being influenced by top-down forces or bottom-up forces. 
And 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 there's no consensus on on which it is. There's no real consensus, and uh, there are a lot of vested interests that don't like some of the theories. I mean, I, I there seems to be some consensus building, especially in Canada, toward the idea that uh, bottom-up drivers are influencing things. That we're seeing seabird die-offs. We're seeing losses of, of king salmon and coho and sockeye all related to, to a big influx of hatchery fish. Mm. But most of those hatchery fish come out of Alaska, so Alaskans don't much like that theory. <laughs> Is that a convenient theory for uh, for the Canadians, or, or do they have science uh, to back it up? There's some science to back it up. I mean, the science is, is really, uh, the science is hard to sort out, but the, the biomass now in the North Pacific is is mainly pink salmon. Um, you know, we got four other species of salmon, and they've fallen. The, uh, the Russians are busy pumping pink salmon into the Bering Sea, which will where a lot of our salmon up, end up at the same rate we're pumping pink salmon into the Gulf of Alaska. So... There's a lot of pink salmon out there. So Bristol Bay, you said Bristol Bay is doing okay. Is there, are there, are there reasons why Bristol Bay may be doing okay, and why the Cook Inlet, uh, Prince William Sound area are, is is having difficulty? Is there different parts of the ocean? Certainly, but uh, well, it, 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 it appears it may be as simple as timing in the ocean. Um, a lot of fish gather in a bearing speed of feed. Uh, the fish that leave here kind of get swept along the coast by the Alaska current and end up out there. It, it may be as simple as all those Bristol Bay fish getting the ocean first and having a pasture that isn't all chewed up to uh, graze in the ocean. And, and you know, I, I don't think you could ignore when you look at Bristol Bay that the area is warmed up out there and we're probably, we're probably getting better freshwater production that's putting more young fish to sea for them. Oh, really? Really? Yeah, so it gets pretty, I mean, it's, it's a very, you know, it's a very complicated picture in that some parts of global warming we win, some parts of global warming we lose. Um, the complexity of the of the North Pacific ecosystem is, is mind-boggling. I mean, every fish eats every other fish at some point in its lifestyle, and... Little fish that start out as prey become predators at the top, and it, 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 it's really hard for any scientist to put together exactly what's happening there. So, Craig, has this translated over into, particularly in the Kenai Cook Inlet area, has this translated over into exacerbating the the debate, the divide between commercial fishermen and and sport fishermen? Oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> What? There's only so there's only so many fish to go around, and and you know as a state we've not done a very good job of setting any kind of objective standards for mediating. Um, you know, to me, on, a, on some fundamental economic level, it's simple. We do an economic analysis. We figure out where the state makes the most money off those fish, and and we kind of drive fish to that direction. Um, everybody's kind of fought that, and then you have, you know, Alaskans with their personal interest who want, quote-unquote, their fish, thinking that should be the highest priority. So, it, it, yeah, it, it, it's it's a battle. It's always a battle. I don't see that battle lessening. Um, it's going to go on for a long time. I've spent some time down in the Kenai uh, this summer and 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 subject of politics has come up, not surprisingly, when I'm around. Um, and and I was surprised, frankly, at at, at the reaction some people had to, to Mike Dunleavy based upon the fact that Bob Penny uh, is a big contributor to the PAC, to the independent expenditure campaign that's uh, supporting Dunleavy for governor. And and there was a div- people were dividing up whether they support Dunleavy or not, based upon Bob Bob Penny's participation, do you, do we do you do you expect to see that carry over into the into the into the do you see do you see that showing up in the primary? Do you expect to see it carry over into the general? It, it, it certainly will on the Kenai. Um, Penny's become a lightning rod down there. Um, the commercial fishery has painted him as a demon. Um, they've done a good job of it. 
if you're in the commercial fishing business, uh, Bob Kenny is the root of all evil, and he's back people who want to put more fish in the river. And, uh, yeah, I, I, there's no way that doesn't come into the election. And, and I, I, you know, maybe, maybe most of my friends on the Kenai are commercial fish, but do you see that, do you see that tilting the Kenai one way or the other? I mean, is there, is there a heavy sport fish or a heavy commercial fish or is it more split down there? Well, these days it's hard to tell because the commercial fishermen are very noisy, um, and very aggressive and, you know, they push their agenda heavily. So you don't hear a lot of people publicly stating their support for Bob Penny. In fact, it'd be a good way to get yourself shot on a peanut. <laughs> but uh, the uh, the silent majority is one of those things that's always hard to judge. And there's a very, you know, kind of fluid shifting economy on the Kenai that is hugely dependent on tourism, and it's going to be an interesting vote. Well, we'll uh, we'll pick that back up when we uh, when we come out of the commercial break. Uh, this is Brad Keithley sitting in for Tom Anderson today, having a conversation with Craig Medred, uh, with Sarah Jarose, uh playing in the background. Thank you, Rick. Uh, and we'll pick this back up uh, with Craig Medred when we come back from the half-hour break. Brad Keithley sitting in for Tom Anderson. On, me, on the line with me, uh, the last segment, continuing into this segment, is well-known Alaska journalist uh, Craig Medred. Uh, we've been talking about fish. Craig, one, one question. I, I want to move on to the quality of reporting that we've got in the state, but I want to finish with one, with, with one piece on fish. You said that the, on the Kenai, the commercial fishermen are certainly very vocal and, and very, uh, very active. I would think in the state, if there's any place that has – you know, a sport fish stronghold, it would be the Kenai. Do I, do I misunderstand that or, or is there, is there? Uh, <laughs> no, I think there is a stronghold. I just think that there's a very, uh, they're very timid about saying anything. Um, there's certainly, you know, there's certainly plenty of people that are aware with, with the economics are. Um, I, I don't know if you visit, are you there, Brad? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, Okay. I don't know. Did you hit Fred Meyer while you were down there? Did I hit? Yeah, I hit Fred Meyer. Yeah. You know, you know how busy that place is. Yes. Well, that provides most of the budget of the of the uh, city of Soldotna on the sales tax there, <laughs> and it's it's tourism money. And I mean, there are people in the community of Soldotna aware of that. Um, so it's kind of a Soldotna Kenai split down there. There's a there's a definite tourism commercial fishing split. Um, the commercial fishing people are really, really aggressive, and there are a lot of people in the tourism community that just keep their mouth shut. They just figure it's better for business if I stay out of this. So it makes it hard to tell, you know, what exactly the dynamics are down there. So has, has uh, and, and and I don't want to go down too far this this road, but I'm curious has has Treadwell captured some of that some of that concern about Bob Penny being so closely tied to the Dunleavy campaign, or is Walker going to capture that, or is Begich going to capture that? How well, does, how I, do, I, think, I think Walker's got that locked up. Um, but how many votes that is, is hard to tell. I mean, certainly certainly, if you look at the contributions to Walker, they, all of those Kenai fishermen are, are, in the governor's, are in the governor's pocket, and he's played to that, and uh, he's shaped the, the fishery down there to benefit them, and, you know... How that plays outside of the Kenai, I think, may be a bigger issue than how it plays on the Kenai, where I'm thinking it's kind of going to split down the middle. Um, once you get to the map sewer anchorage, where people have lost fish because the governor has kind of structured things to push into Kenai commercial fishermen, it, it could hurt him badly. Is that, it, 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 I mean, that, it's making sense to me now that, that Penny's uh, given so much to Dunleavy. Is that is that sort of his way of trying to develop a counter uh, to what's been going on at the at the yeah? I, th- I think I think Penny's decided that there's no hope with his governor that you know Walker's not going to talk about you know changing the way changing the status quo or any kind of move to shift more fish into tourism. And I think it's a straight up you know politics move. Interesting. So we got to get a new governor to fix this. Interesting, Craig. I want to. Sh- I, I, you know, I've known Bob Penny for a long time. I, I, he's pretty. Uh, you know, that would be 
the guy. I, mean, I haven't asked him about this, but it would be the kind of thing he'd do. I mean, he's gotten involved in, in Alaska political campaigns before. You know, was one time a big supporter of Tony Knowles. Um, Knowles, of course, made some shifts there. Knowles moves some fish to the sport fishing and tourism businesses. Um, yeah, it'd be, it'd be right up his alley. Well, it certainly has. I mean, I, again, the funny I, part is the funny part of this is that I don't know if you know, but Bob Penny is also in the commercial fishing business. <laughs> no, I didn't know that, and that cer- that, yeah. cer- that certainly didn't come up in the conversation <laughs> I was having with people on the Kenai. It was much yeah, more about he's, he's involved in a in a in a company that 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 smokes Alaska salmon and has a pretty good size, from what I understand, smoked salmon business. So it, it's Alaska. It's all very strange. Yeah. Well, it certainly I'm, it surprised me the, that, that that was the topic of interest. I mean, you know, I try to talk about the PFD, and that, that got about a three-second conversation, and then they went on to the fish conversation. Maybe again, <laughs> it's, maybe again it's the people I hang out with, but uh, that certainly was Well, a- if you know people involved with the commercial fishing business on the Kenai, they live it, they breathe it, they eat it. Um, you know, they are the definition of one-issue voters. <laughs> All right, I want to move on. I want to move on to a slight to a different topic.